Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 28th of April. Indian Prime Minister Modi launches development projects including seven cancer hospitals in Northeast Assam. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir upset over adulterated milk supply demand food testing lab. And Sri Lanka's opposition leader Premadasa says his party is ready to recover country from crisis if given power. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday laid the foundation stone of various developmental projects relating to healthcare and education sector and inaugurated seven cancer hospitals in northeastern Assam state. He hailed the Bodo Accord that has ushered in peace in tribal areas and said efforts are underway to completely remove the Armed Forces Special Powers Sect from India's northeast region. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday inaugurated a slew of educational, healthcare and developmental projects worth 215 million US dollars in northeastern Assam state. Addressing the Peace, Unity and Development Rally in Assam's Karbi Anglong, the Prime Minister hailed the 2020 Bodo Accord reached between Bodo tribal representatives and the government, saying it has brought long-lasting peace to Assam. Modi said the government is also trying to dilute the AFSPA, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in the Northeast region. He also hailed the double-engine BJP government in Assam. The Prime Minister later in the day virtually inaugurated seven cancer hospitals in parts of Assam state along with Indian industrialist Ratan Tata and laid foundation stones of seven more such facilities. 84-year-old Ratan Tata, a renowned philanthropist, said he wishes to dedicate his last years to health. He said the centers will make treatment accessible to all. The network of 17 healthcare centers being built under cancer control model of Tata Trust is expected to serve 50,000 people annually from Assam and its neighboring state. Efforts to douse the fire at the hill-sized waste dump in India's capital, New Delhi, continued for the third day on Thursday. Flames blazed at Balswa landfill site as firefighters battled the fires that broke out on Tuesday evening amid extreme heat and low visibility. The Delhi government imposed a fine of Rs 50 lakhs on the civic body, not MCD, in connection with the fire. Flames blazed at a hill-sized waste dump in India's capital, New Delhi, for a third day on Thursday as firefighters battled the fires amid extreme heat and low visibility. The cause of the fire at the Bhalswa landfill site was under investigation, though such incidents are commonplace during India's scorching summers when temperatures regularly surpass 40 degrees Celsius, that is 104 degrees Fahrenheit, before the monsoon rains bring relief. Locals who live near the Bhalswa dump yard in Delhi have been reporting breathing problems since the massive fire broke on Tuesday. ऊपर से आज तक नहीं हुआ 10 15 मिनट लग ही जाता है आग अपने आप ऐसा लगता है देखो बगल में जुग्गी थे 20 जुग्गी थे 20 जुग्गी जल गए हैं हम्म मान लो इतना गंदगी है इसके ऊपर कि आदमी के पानी तो छोड़ दो पानी तो इतना कचरा आता है मत पूछो ऊपर से आदमी को बाल उल भी सब उड़ते हैं इतना कचरा पानी पीने लायक नहीं है पानी 
Fires in Delhi's dump yards also contribute to the toxic air that people living in the world's most polluted capital have to breathe. Meanwhile, the Delhi government on Thursday imposed a fine of rupees 50 lakhs, that is around 65,262 US dollars on Civic Body, North Municipal Corporation of Delhi, in connection with the fire at the landfill site. Delhi Environment Minister Gopal Rai imposed the fine on the basis of the investigation report by Delhi Pollution Control Committee. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken testified before the Congressional hearing by the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on State Foreign Operations on Wednesday. During the hearing, he said India and Russia became partners of choice out of necessity when the United States was not in a position to be New Delhi's partner. He, however, asserted that now there is a growing strategic convergence between Washington and New Delhi. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said on Wednesday that India had partnered with Russia at a time when Washington was not in a position to take up that role. He made the statement while testifying before the U.S. Senate Committee on Appropriations and the Subcommittee on State and Foreign Operations. Republican Senator William Hegarty during the hearing asked Blinken about his views on the India-United States relationship. Blinken added that the relationship between Delhi and Moscow went back decades. He, however, said that many countries were now having a relook at some of their partners and interests, particularly when it comes to their relationship with Russia. And of course, in the case of India, there's a relationship that goes back decades. Mm -hmm. And Russia for India was, uh, out of necessity, a partner uh, of choice uh, when we were not in a position uh, to mm -hmm. be a partner. Now we are, and we are uh, investing in that effort. Blinken said the United States government was now investing in efforts to partner with India and added that now there was a growing strategic convergence between U.S. and India, and of course, China is a big part of that. Blinken said U.S. President Joe Biden has spent a lot of time directly engaging with Prime Minister Narendra Modi and India's leadership. The United States last month offered India more defense and energy seals after President Joe Biden called India somewhat shaky in acting against Russia. India has refrained from explicitly condemning Russia's invasion while calling for an immediate end to violence. Several other countries, including the US, UK, European Union and Canada, have announced sanctions against Russian government officials, banks and oligarchs after the country attacked Ukraine. In news from Pakistan, technical talks between Pakistan and the International Monetary Fund IMF for the enhancement and revival of the stalled loan program have commenced. Junior Finance Minister Aisha Ghos Pasha confirmed on Wednesday. Pasha said their talks with IMF officials focused on the subsidies given by the former government led by ousted Premier Imran Khan, as the fund felt those were not sustainable. But they also showed concern about Pakistan's increasing current account deficit. Jihad Azur, director of IMF's Middle East and Central Asia Department, told Reuters in Dubai that they also discussed the country's huge current account deficit with Pakistani officials in Washington. The officials said that IMF team will assess the policy priorities of the new government and the economic impact in the context of the war in Ukraine. A new Pakistani government led by Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif that took over this month said it was facing enormous economic challenges with the risk of GDP growth falling and double-digit inflation it blames on the mismanagement of the previous administration. Moving on. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have expressed anger over instances of supply of adulterated milk in the illegally occupied region from parts of Pakistan. They have lamented the government has failed to improve the dairy sector and maintain proper food safety standards. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have demanded the government to take immediate measures to improve the dairy sector expressing worries over supply of adulterated milk with chemicals in several areas. Residents have lamented it has been over 70 years, but the Pakistani establishment has failed to even open a food testing laboratory in the illegally occupied region, and they have to get the food samples tested elsewhere. In the absence of any support to local dairy farmers, 
a large portion of milk supply comes from outside only with no proper safety standards party nahi banti to main ye kahunga aaj 73 se 75 saal ho chuke hain azad kashmir ke andar abhi tak main nahi kahunga ki hamare hukmaranon ne apne halaf ki pasdari karte hue awam ki behtri ke liye koi kaam kiya ho kyunki ye basic kaam tha awam ki sehat basic kaam tha lekin aaj tak agar food testing laboratory ye nahi bana sake state ke andar to mujhe batayi ye aur kya kaam kare local say they have now become increasingly intolerant of the pakistani occupation as pakistan government consistently maintains a negligent attitude and ignores even their basic demands they believe islamabad's agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped in news from sri lanka With the demonstrations roiling Sri Lanka for weeks over the ongoing economic crisis, Sri Lanka's opposition leader Sajid Premadasa has said that his party is ready to recover the country if given power. Premadasa has been leading a massive protest march rally to capital Colombo to demand the resignation of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa and his cabinet. Sri Lanka's opposition leader Sajid Premadasa has said that his party Samagi Janabala Vegaya is ready to recover the country from the ongoing economic crisis if the majority power of the people is given to their party. Premadasa blamed that the present government led by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has plunged the island nation into an abyss and he can help the country in recovering from its worst economic crisis in decades. The main opposition party is leading a 6-day protest march Samagi Bala Pe Gamana demanding the resignation of Gotabaya Rajapaksa and his cabinet. The protest march entered the third day on Thursday. Sri Lanka is facing one of its worst economic crises resulting in widespread protests against the Rajapaksa family leaders including President Gotabaya and his elder brother PM Mahinda Rajapaksa. Despite calls to step down PM Mahinda has refused to do so. On Wednesday he said that President Gotabaya had not asked him to resign. We cannot turn our back on the constitution and leave by simply allowing the country to go into a state of anarchy, PM Mahinda Rajapaksa added. Demonstrations have roiled the South Asian island nation of 22 million people for weeks with people protesting at shortages of fuel and other items and prolonged power cuts. Nepal's capital Kathmandu has been painted purple as the jacaranda trees are blooming with flowers creating a spectacular view around the city. The streets and corners of Nepal's capital Kathmandu have been painted purple as the jacaranda trees are blooming with flowers an annual phenomenon that creates a spectacular view around the city. Called jacaranda mimosa folia The purple flowers are in full bloom in the months of March and April. They have always been used for decoration by locals, a tradition that has been kept for at least a century and a half. Every year Kathmandu's main ring road and Kingsway get covered with the purple flowers, which cannot resist breeze and light showers. Jacaranda are fully ko cha, sadak ko wari pari aas paas ma dherai thau thau ma jacaranda are fully ko cha. अनि एकदम पूरे पर्पल कलर देखि रोड को छेवछावर में हिड़ा हिड़ा खेल तो दृश्य एकदम लाभदायक देखि एकदम सुंदर देखि तो दृश्य अभी पूरे पर्पल कलर ने ढकमक्क भर से रोड अलग झिलीमिली देखी रखे इट इज बिलीव दैट द राना रूलर्स हु रूल द किंगडम अफ ने फ्रम एटीन फोर्टी सिक्स एडी अंटिल नाइन्टीन फिफ्टी वन एडी ब्रॉट इन द जैकर ट्रीज which grow from cutting or grafting by seedling root stock it normally take 2 to 3 years to bloom this genus thrives in full sun and sandy soils which explains their abundance in warmer climates as eid al fitr a festivity that marks the end of islamic holy month of ramadan draws near ticket counters at bangladesh's railway stations have witnessed a growing number of travelers Thousands of people have lined up at the Kamalapur railway station in capital Dhaka every day since last weekend waiting to buy tickets for Eid trips. Bangladesh Railway on April 23 began to sell train tickets in advance for Eid travelers who will flock home to join the festival with their families. Muslim majority Bangladesh will celebrate the Eid al-Fitr festival on or around May 3 depending upon moon sightings. According to Bangladeshi Railways Minister Nurul Islam Sujan this year advance tickets for Eid would be available in train stations and on the app. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.